I am Kayla. Please like and subscribe. Welcome back to another Crypto Bros. I'm a Holly Girl. Number 39. And we got a lot of stuff today, don't we? Yeah, we do. So uh, we've got Mr. Don Bailey that's joining us again. Yeah. Uh, he was on with yeah. us. Hey, Don. <laughs> he was on with us in uh, early September. I think it was September 16th to be exact. Uh, right as things were getting started, um, kind of before any of the utilities had been announced and um, he decided to come back on and answer some questions for us. So we appreciate you coming back on, Don, and, and spending your Friday with us. We'll try to be respectful of your time, uh, but we do have a lot of questions, but thank you for joining us. And thanks for having me. Thanks. Uh, real quick, I wanted to, before we got into talking to Don, I wanted to say thank you to all the people that showed up on our live New Year's Eve um, podcast. Yeah. A lot of weird, crazy things happened. <laughs> they didn't turn out the way that we had hoped and anticipated as we had planned that out for several weeks. But it was real and it was genuine and we had a blast. Yeah, it was fun. It was exhausting. It was exhausting. Six hours was a long time. Uh, but <laughs> but thank you for turn, for tuning in. Uh, it, it, it's something that we want to do again at some point. But now that we've been through it, we can we know what to do and what not to do. And because a lot of people may or may not know this, but the first twenty minutes of it didn't even show up because we thought we were live and we weren't even <laughs> on the air. Wow. My buddy texts me and goes, "I think something's wrong," and then we had to try to recapture that. Yeah. And it is what it is, but it's fun. But thank you for tuning in. Hopefully 2023 has started off right for everybody. And the next live one, we're going to have maybe some special guests on there. Yeah, maybe. we got some ideas yeah. uh, coming up, but oh. we're going to keep that real tight right here. Yeah. Shh. Oh, wow. Uh, also, I wanted to tell you guys, too, that, you know, part of what we do is we have the Holativity segment. Uh, we have the Caleb's Choice segment. Uh, we have the Taste Test segment. We are going to introduce a new segment next week uh, that is Truth or Dare. Uh, we'll explain oh. that more in detail next week. <laughs> uh, but it's something that I think is going to be kind of fun. And it's not questions we're coming up with. It's actually a program, a bot that we're going to use that we're going to borrow from our friends from Chaotic Exposure. And we're going to see how that turns out, which should be very <laughs> interesting. I'm really curious to see how many people are actually going to pick D.A.R.E. But well, we'll see. Yeah. So it should be fun. <laughs> so let's get right into the crypto talk, though. Uh, before we get started, a lot of what we're going to talk about today is uh, with Don and, and his project, BBTF. But we would be, <clears throat> excuse me, we'd be doing a disservice if we didn't talk about Grove real fast. So today, is it 6 p.m. Eastern time? I forgot yep. to look at what. Yeah, 6 p.m. EST. Okay. They are yeah. actually going to transition from the token to the coin. People at that point should be able to go to the website and um, swap their token and, and turn it into the coin. I believe it was 1 billion is going to equal one, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. 1 billion to one yeah. consolidation. Yep. And all mm -hmm. that's going down today. And I've seen so much speculation on what that's going to mean, whether it comes to price impact, um, all those sort of things. <laughs> of course. No one knows, right? No one, no one knows. But I think what everybody does know is it's headed in the right direction, right? Like the promises that they have been telling us, and I, I don't like these word promises, but just the roadmap they've put out there, uh, it's all starting to happen. And yeah. happening quickly, like. Yeah. And John is a great guy, um, like absolutely phenomenal. And um, my experience with him is that he, really wants Grove to be one of the best um, cryptocurrencies out there. Yeah. And he's going to do it. He has the backing to do it. He has the experience to do it. And he has the team to do it. So like, this is literally just the beginning and them building that infrastructure. Yeah. That's awesome. yeah and I, I'd be doing another disservice if I didn't talk about, you know, there's some FUD out there about, well, my trillion tokens is now only going to be worth a thousand and this and that. But no. your bag is the same price. It's the same yeah. price, right? It's, it's I, I think price. that's very funny. Yeah. I, I yeah. get it on the side it's, of if I have, say, and I'm just going to use the number trillion. If I have a trillion tokens and it loses four zeros, 
I have a lot of money, right? Yeah. yeah. Or if it ever got to a dollar, I have genera- or generational wealth. Right. Um, did we lose Don? No, he's still there. Okay. There he is. <laughs> um, well, if you got, you would have to have, okay, so like they're launching at 73 cents. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I did see that from John saying yes. there the starting is 73 cents. Um, it does, you know, how much you have. Cause I know a lot of people have in the billions. It kind of is like, well, crap, you know, yeah. I can kind of understand it because you have a hundred, you have a hundred billion say now you only have a hundred coins. Right. Yeah, right. Um, yeah. And so just even getting to a dollar, you have a hundred dollars. And so right. it's, it's a little bit harder of a pill to swallow. However, it's not any different than the amount you have today True. in dollar amount. Yeah. And um, also, so people. Oh, no, you're right. You're 100% right. Psychologically, we like to see more coins because, you know, right. you look at it as a bigger moon bag when, you know, mathematically, um, same difference. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. I will say this, though um, a lot of exchanges, you know, you know one of their. Um, criteria for listing on the exchange is your total supply so you know right. someone that has like a huge supply they're limited with exchanges that they have mm-hmm. access to so i'd keep that in mind too yeah. uh when looking at the consolidation when you're asking yourself why the consolidation right well yeah. and also you know i i get it to the point too that it doesn't seem like losing four zeros is that big of a task Right. It just doesn't seem our our minds look at that as, oh, we lose four zeros. Yay. You know, not so hard. But to get to a dollar is always like that benchmark, like it's still going to get to a dollar. So when you start doing that, the psychology Mm -hmm. of that, I understand it. Excuse me. But the math is still the math. And it is what it is. And if if they do what they think they're going to do, excuse me, who's to say that token or that coin, sorry, can't be worth a thousand dollars you know why can't it be worth the same as eth you know or whatever that number is and so if you had a thousand eth right now you'd be pretty happy right oh yeah if you had a thousand bitcoin right now you'd be pretty happy right so i look at it kind of like that too (laughs) if you believe the sky's the limit then it's still going to work out the same way yeah right but you're also going to get more institutional money i believe invested in something that's worth what'd you say it was holly 73 cents coming out yeah Mm -hmm. you know instead of it having eight or nine zeros attached to it because that's more of a gamble to people in their psyche that it's oh wow that's just getting started to where it's 73 cents Something that Let's put some money into it. Legitimizes it. it. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And we've talked about that before, so I don't want to beat a dead horse, but uh, yeah, just stay tuned. I think, like Don said, that it's a great team, a great leader. Um, I I don't want to ever put absolutes out there, but I just don't see John failing. I just don't. I mean, I would really love to talk to him someday and go, how many hours a day do you sleep? Like You, you only fail when you quit. Yep. Right. Yeah. You know. So yeah, I definitely don't see him quitting. Um, no. You know, if one solution doesn't work, find a different solution. So, yeah. and I think you know that type of person. Yeah. And, well, in the past, he said it. He said, "I will not fail. <laughs> I will make sure this succeeds." I mean, he's so confident, and that's reassuring. I think to the holders that when you have a CEO that's confident in what he's doing you kind of, you know, are like, okay, I can sit back and relax, understand that we're in a bear market and watch them build. And that is what they're doing. And it's so exciting. And I mean, it's not just growth. I'm so excited for this year for BBTF, for Mirror Protocol, for Safe Moon. I'm so crazy bullish for this year. It's insane. And Grove is just the one that's kicking it off. Grove is doing a really good job too. Mm-hmm. Like they they put a lot of thought into this. Like so like and this is because like um I'll just say this. What we're ex- experiencing as holders of Grove or Glove Grove I'm Grove. mixing yeah. glow token <laughs> and grow. And it's because I'm I'm literally time. looking at this thing that Prime made. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, but as um, 
like what we're experiencing on our side as holders of Grove is not what they're working on in the background. They're already working on more stuff to put out. Uh, and that's like, you know, one of the experiences that um, I, I know, I know personally that their entire team is dedicated to their mission and the success of what they're doing. So, yeah, no doubt. So kudos to them. I hope everything goes off well for them today. Um, I know that for a fact we'll be talking more about them in the future, and yes. I'll just leave it at that. But, <clears throat> excuse me, um, let's just get right into your project, Don. And, sure. Uh, once again, should we segue and talk about the Grove ref Reflections? Yeah, actually, let's oh, let's start okay. with that. So one of the questions we get a lot is, hey, what happened to the Grove Reflections? Like, I was one of the people that bought in early, whatever it was, but I haven't received those. What what kind of update can you tell people about sure. the Grove Reflections? It's very simple. So, like, we have a snapshot. So we have the holders and the amounts that they need, right, um, of Grove. Um, the initial problem, like we were trying to reflect eight different tokens, right? So this one token specifically to reflect, and I think at the time it was like 80 grand, maybe a hundred grand at the time, um, at the current price, it would have cost us $70,000 to distribute it. Um, and not, and it's because of the cost per, uh, user um that's being transacted i think the cost was like three dollars and something cents to send tokens to a single user mm -hmm. um so it was extremely expensive to send out so you know i you know contacted carlo and john and i was like hey can you guys help us with this and they were like yeah sure we can help you um just send us a list of you know everybody that we needed to send it to so obviously like i had to go to someone else right um our developer at the time and say hey can you get this list for us took them a while to get the list but we still got the list we send it to john john was just like 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 the formatting on a list is wrong and it's not pulling up the correct value so sent it back then we got him the right list with the right value but by the time he got the the list with the right value uh we had decided it would be better just to distribute grove coin um instead of you know the token and one of the benefits is is that like we don't actually have to use their resources to distribute it we can distribute it ourselves okay so because of the gas efficiency yeah. so no. which holders will get that what the snapshot was taken which holders will get that? at the time that the distribution was happening it's only for the holders that should have received the reflections at the time yeah. okay okay so you're speaking on reflections so that list has changed from day one correct to now so can you kind of take us behind the scenes on why and sure how that how that looks yeah so um so some of the decisions were because of information we got about the project um you know we want to reflect projects that we think are going to be here for a while so um if we get some information and we think that you know we shouldn't ref and we lose faith in that project then we don't reflect them anymore so um like that's one of the criteria another criteria is does it fit our ecosystem so if the project isn't necessarily fitting our ecosystem and also it's it's getting really competitive right so we're getting approached all the time by projects who want to be on the list so we're constantly having to reevaluate would this project be better than this project? Would this project be better than this project? And then additionally, two of the slots are for our mirror protocol tokens. Um, so the mirror protocol is extremely important, but we get to create um, a mechanism for not only feeding into mirror protocol ecosystem, but mirror protocol ecosystem feeding back into BBTF with that cycle. So. Okay, so can you give us the updated list of what you're reflecting today? Yeah, sure. So off the top of my head, Safe Moon, uh, Mirror Protocol BNB, the MP2 slot will rotate between all the Mirror Protocols once those are all out. Um, but it's locked at Mirror Protocol BTC right now. Uh, Glow. Um, let's see, uh, Meta BUSD. Mm ever reflect and something coin come on holly what is it called oh reflecto yes reflecto <laughs> and reflecto is pretty cool so like 
You can go <laughs> into, like, if you have Reflecto in your wallet, you can go into the Reflecto DAP, and then you can be like, okay, Reflecto, I want, you know, Binance Peg Bitcoin as a reflection, or I want BBTF as a reflection, or I want, so you can go with that one token and choose what you want reflecting. And then like, yeah, our part yeah, of our it is part of reflecting, it is reflecting specific, tokens. specific tokens. I, so I love that concept just because there are some things that I'm like, oh, you know, I, it's not, I don't get enough for something to actually keep it in my wallet, right? So yeah. I, I'm all for, you know, everything that I'm getting through BBTF. Um, but I was actually going to ask you if you were ever going to pivot to where we can select what tokens we'd rather have, you know, over an, another one. And no disrespect to any of the projects, because it's especially the ones that reflect. So I was just curious about that because I have been asked. Yeah. So uh, we've discussed that multiple times. Um, it's just in terms of uh the design that we're going after like the question is 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 that a design of bbtf or is that another project that has that design um specifically that auto diversification feature whether it be through mirror protocol staking or just through the bbtf token like we kind of want to keep that um mm -hmm. and i feel like a lot of people and, it, and it, they can do it like under that um kind of paradigm would maybe do BUSD or BNB, you know, it, yeah. it would get the benefit of like, what is auto diversification? You run into a little I, issue though with those tokens, don't you though, if if they don't get that exposure of the reflection? Mm -hmm. Isn't that part of the reason why they want to be a part of your ecosystem? Uh, is because of the reflections and yeah. the holders and the volume on their charts. So if yeah. nobody picked their coin, then they, the attractive reflecting, yeah. yeah, would kind of, so I could see both sides of that for sure. Right. But just as we move on, let me ask you one more question about the tokens that you reflect. Is it fair to say that if you decided to go with a different token or take one, off of, your or list, take one off of your list, that it's not always that because, it's of not something because, because of something happens. bad happens? It's not always it's because, not always because, because happens. something bad happens. Okay. okay. So, because so think, sometimes it's just a business decision. Yeah. Yeah. So I think sometimes people always go, oh, well, they took that coin off or that token off because there's, you know, infighting or something bad's going on because everybody sometimes. always goes to that extreme. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'm like, maybe it's just not a good fit. You know? Yeah. Like, and uh, anyone that you ask, like, um, I, Honestly, I try to be as professional as possible in any business engagement. So if there is a disengagement with the business, like I like it's not my intention to burn bridges. Um, so as a result, um, like even in that situation, it sucks that our design kind of ne like necessitates that, you know, we when we're changing our reflection token that, you know, there is some type of disengagement with the token. but. That's inevitable with the design of the token. It shouldn't necessarily uh, lead to any type of speculation of, um, you know, negative infighting or anything like that. Okay, and I, and I would agree. And I just wanted to give you an opportunity to, to talk about that just because social media gets on fire sometimes and people run down rabbit holes and it's like, <laughs> it doesn't always have to be one extreme or the other, you know, so. Correct. Right. Speaking of that too, you're, you're, fully automated on the reflections now is that correct that is correct so we have a what's called a gas station so that gas station receives gas from mpbnb and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that uh specifically sure. um so the gas that we get from mpbnb feeds the gas to cycle through reflections so whenever there's a transaction you'll see reflections running um we're trying to um stay away from you know, taking BNB from the development or marketing wallet and sending it to that wallet to push it through. Um, and we're really focusing on building out the rest of the mirrors and the mirror protocol ecosystem um, because the uh, MP's gas or in the tax structure of the MP, it's going to feed the gas for BBTF. Um, that'll keep it rolling. Um, but additionally, the liquidity injection operation contract will be contributing to the gas station as well. So we're just building a whole ecosystem around contributing to that gas station um, because it's, in my opinion, what I would like to see is that gas station feeding more than just the distributions. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, with that being said, is there any other reflections that are still owed to holders or is it just um, the Grove? Um, so there is about maybe $40 of TXS um, that's sitting in uh, a wallet to be distributed. Uh, we have to go out and manually distribute it, but we have the snapshot for it. And um, yeah, that's the only thing that's, um, I guess, pending uh, in terms of like our manual uh, requirement to send out reflections. Um, and we already have the snapshot. If people are old it, then go get it. Uh, okay. In terms of if you have pending reflections, um, most of the times, if you see someone online say, hey, I haven't received my reflections or you're like, where are my reflections at? It's probably because they have $20 or $10 or $5 in BBTF. Um, and the reason why is because um, in order to trigger your reflections, uh, your rewards have to be built up enough that they can pay for your gas to distribute them. So um, if you don't have enough rewards built up to trigger the gas to send them, then you haven't gotten your reflections yet. So um, that's one thing. Um, and then number two, um, in terms of uh, people that do have pending rewards and they want to go see the uh, balances of those pending rewards, uh, we created dashboard.bbtftoken.com. You can go in, put your wallet address, you can see what your pending rewards are. Um, and if you just want to trigger your distribution, you can go into BSC scan and, you know, just pay your gas and get your rewards. But again, um, you would most likely in that scenario be paying more gas than your rewards are worth. So is that a tool that is out right now? Because I feel like I have heard nothing about this. Dashboard.bbtftoken.com? Yes, is it? Yeah, like, it's live oh, right now. Holy crap. Okay, I, that's something yeah. I, I need to incorporate. All it's right. really cool. Yeah. So you put your wallet address in um, and here, can I, is it okay if I share my screen on this? Sure. If you yeah. want, yeah. Yeah, so uh, can you guys see the screen? Uh -huh. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I just took a random transaction from the chart and you literally put your wallet address in. You can see our volume for the past 60 minutes, past six hours, and the past uh, 24 hours. You can see our total holder count. You can see the number of 20 or transactions over a 24 hour period. And then you can see our reward pool balance, right? So, and this shows you all the tokens that we have. Um, and obviously I'm gonna have to replace that one since that doesn't exist anymore. But those two things are identical because they sent us this in replace of this when that merge happened. Um, and then we also have EverReflect. These reward pools, so notice all these tokens have some mechanism of reflection in them. So for example, MetaBUSD reflects in BUSD. That's where this reward pool injection thing comes in. So we'll, we will get the BUSD, the contract will convert it to BNB, and then it will sit in this rewards pool waiting to inject liquidity into the token. Yes. Okay. So, um, That's a, and, I feel like I should have known about this. Like, <laughs> this, I'm like in awe a little bit right now. Yeah, and then, um, so this is a different wallet than the wallet that we're currently holding the staking rewards tokens in because we wanted that to be behind a multi-sig and protected. Um, but when staking goes live, you'll see this balance daily get updated from the volume, you know, the percentage that goes to staking that are ready to be uh, put into the staking rewards pool. Mm -hmm. um, and then also you can see all your pending rewards right here. So this person at this wallet has, you know, 2100 safe moon, uh, 91 MPBNB, 5 BTC. And yeah, so it's, and then I have to get BUSD uh, up here too. Um, so that'll go through an update, but yeah, this so, is already live, ready. And how long has this been live? I feel like, what? <laughs> I like it. It's seriously like so confused right now why I don't know about this. I, I think I released it um, on Christmas. Oh. Okay, so in my defense, I have been MIA because you know family and i've had my little brother from texas come and so i've been away from twitter so okay 
I guess don't beat yourself that up. makes sense. Yeah, so but I thought I read something on it. I need to incorporate it. it. Yeah, I thought I read something on it, but I tried to go back and look for it. I couldn't find it. So, yeah, I, I knew yeah, it was out did. there, but I couldn't remember where I saw yeah, or when I saw it. We didn't but. know that. Yeah, we had So, Don, let me ask you a question about those <laughs> tokens that um, you no longer reflect in. If, in that, when that happens, will you convert those to something else? Or are you like, um, are you going to go ahead and send those tokens to those wallets and zero that out? Does that make sense? Um, you're talking about the rewards pool? Yeah. So the rewards pool is a specific part of the um, BBTF contract. It's like included in the taxes. So 2% of every transaction contributes to the rewards pool. So we're always increasing our size in the tokens that show up in the rewards pool. Um, as a result, like the goal of it is to um, essentially take large positions and tokens that reflect and then take those reflections that we're getting from those tokens and always feed liquidity to the charts. Um, theoretically, what you could see is the liquidity increasing absent volume on the BBTF charts because of the rewards pool function. And um, it's one of the most difficult components of um, our ecosystem to explain. So we made a very simple video about it. Um, and it's on our YouTube channel. You can go mm -hmm. uh, watch it. I think it's called BBTF Growth Rewards Pool Explained. Mm -hmm. All right. That's a good title. <laughs> <laughs> a little a little on the nose there. So, so you kind of brought it up with your dashboard that you just shared with everybody. But uh, staking has been something that you guys have been talking about for a little while. Uh, Correct. What can you share with us about that or if sure. anything? Because I know so, people, that's like a hot button topic right now with not yeah. just your token, but everyone is talking about staking. Yeah, I'm excited to see what the next hot button topic is after staking is released. Me too. Um, <laughs> but so our staking is different than a lot of other tokens, completely different. Um, we have a volume based rewards. So on every sell transaction, I believe 3% of the sell transactions contributes tokens to uh, four rewards that for people that are staking. Um, but additionally, we built up a lot of rewards over the time because the staking pool wasn't present. So like all those previous tokens that have built up uh, will also be released to people that are in a staking period. So what you'll see is, is like, let's just assume um, the volume stays equal, right? So this is assuming volume doesn't change. At the beginning of the staking pool life cycle, we're gonna dump a lot of tokens into the staking pool so there'll be a lot of rewards at the beginning of the life cycle, but as it goes on, it's uh, the rewards are gonna be completely reliant on the volume of the BBTF token. But right. also um, the staking pool will increase from people entering and exiting, so um, the pool, so. Yeah, and so along with that, along with the other ones too, volume has a lot to do with it. So, mm -hmm. and right now volume pretty much across the board is pretty low, I mean, compared to where it has been in, in, in the past. And I don't just mean with BBTF, but just in general. It's, so, it's been down everywhere. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. when that increases, then we're gonna see some things kick in with your token that I think maybe will make it easier for everybody to see how it works, right? When you're not, when there's not much volume, it's hard to see the mechanism in the machine turning but I, Correct. would you agree with that or? No, or I would definitely agree with that. Um, I, I definitely agree with that. And um, what we're trying to build and some of the things that we're coming out, um, we're, our goal is to create an ecosystem that's market agnostic, uh, meaning that we're not necessarily tied to other market trends. Um, primarily that refers to what we do for marketing um, how, and marketing or promotions, like that's pretty much. So how many more new people can we bring into the BBTF ecosystem? And if BBTF becomes an entry point for people into DeFi, then obviously our volume would be detached from the market as a whole, right? Because there right. would be new entrants every day and they're entering through BBTF. So the goal is to make BBTF appealing enough in the message, you know, diversify everyone everywhere, um, get the message out. So TV commercial and production, Mobiquity advertising, another ad thing or tech that's going to be coming out um you know our aligner platform uh like 
through mechanisms like that, we can become the entry point into DeFi. Okay. Um, really, one of my last questions for you, and it's kind of a, a general question, but I don't remember exactly when it was, but you kind of made the um, decision, public decision to kind of go a little bit silent on social media. Correct. Uh, can you, as a CEO, can you kind of talk us through that decision-making process and yeah. has it been good or has it been bad? Um, it's it's actually, like for me personally, it's been great. Um, so not only am I silent, I'm, I just stay off of it a lot. Um, the reason why is because, you know, you have the people that love BBTF and then you have the people that just absolutely hate BBTF. Um, now the thing is, it's like, like, just imagine you're sitting there, you're working and you're trying to push and then like conspiracy theorists come out of the woodwork, you know, about your project, or there's someone who's saying they could do your project better than you, right? That really doesn't feel good personally, right? Especially when like me personally, you know, someone goes into a, you know, uh, Twitter space, I, you guys know it's Twitter space I'm talking about. And then they say, uh, you know, I wish Don could commit suicide, you know, yeah. or, um, you know, someone else publicly doxing my phone number and address. It's that type of stuff that makes me not want to be on Twitter because, you know, it can be discouraging to the creative process if you just like labor on that issue and everything. Um, so moving away for Twitter kind of helped me um, like more emotionally um, in terms of like, if I want to be creative and get my work done, I'm less concerned about, you know, what those specific people are saying, um, you know, but, and then uh, pretty much like I just talked about, you know, there are a ton of projects that their only marketing tools are Twitter, Discord, Telegram, right? Mm -hmm. Or Reddit. Um, I removing myself from Twitter forced me to conceptualize new methods to um, get the um, message out about BBTF. So if I can't rely on Twitter for messaging, like what do I do? And this is when we start, you know, getting it out of the um, Twitter token kind of ideology and moving it into a token that, you know, is actually gonna have commercials, you know, is actually, you know, like creating an ideal customer profile or an avatar, as some people say it, and then identifying methods to send a message to that, you know, ICP. And, and in the process, though, I mean, I, I, you're a smart guy, so you kind of probably realize that there would be some people that would take that personally, that you abandon them and you're not talking to them anymore. Uh, but I'm with you on the fact that I don't know how anybody could do any job, whether it's a token, what, whatever it is. And if you constantly just have people slamming you the entire time, it yeah. would kill my motivation yeah. personally. I mean, yeah, one hundred percent. As and I don't try to put us in the same boat here because what we do is completely different. But as this thing is starting to build up that we're doing here, we get more and more negative feedback. Like, right? It's like, wait a second, we're just trying to provide another outlet here. Where is this negativity coming from? Yeah. I can exactly. only imagine what it's like if people are telling you that you need to commit suicide yeah. or doxing your phone yeah. number and address. I. Um, yeah, that's, that's another level. Yeah. yeah. And and it's like so in my opinion, like I should have given less credit to it because the people that are doing it, they do it to everyone. They have no good stuff to say about anything. The only things that they have said good stuff about have been rug pulls, you know. So mm -hmm. I yeah. you know, I should have, you know, uh in the moment and like brushed it off but you know it it takes growth under that environment to like know how to deal with that situation moving forward and also like in politics it's like a hundred times worse so i should have been prepared well so. but not only that it, it it would be way easier to do it if everyone on whatever platform we're talking about was just that way but mm -hmm. even like us we've met some really good people through twitter right we Great didn't really people. start in twitter yeah. until like the summer yeah and so there's good and there's bad but at some point everybody's got to come to the decision of do i keep continuing so moving Correct. away from the twitter i saw that you came out with a video i don't remember it wasn't very long ago a couple of weeks ago 
kind of explaining things. Can we expect more of that moving forward? Um, yes. Um, in terms of the video production that came out explaining the projects, um, that's going to be my new primary mechanism of communicating. Okay. Uh, and the reason why is because the video can be edited. We can deliver information in a way that's understandable. Um, but most importantly, uh, the video can be reviewed by legal. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. So as Holly's trying to reconnect here, there she is. <laughs> no, she, we're good. As, as she's trying to reconnect here. So when you have those videos, like I, I'm a guy that really likes the informative type videos, right? Like it's not necessarily Q and A, but you're telling us what, um, this is probably going to sound bad. I don't mean it to sound bad. What we need to know, you know, not necessarily what we want to know, but moving forward, is there going to be any places that community or holders can ask questions? We'll, we'll have someone in Twitter. Uh, we, we're working on a plan with that right now. So okay. we definitely have something. I, I, I still plan on making appearances. Like that's where, like, I'm still in the safe moon army. So like, let's not forget that part. Um, mm -hmm. I love the speculation and I love going in spaces and listening, listening. I've gotten so many ideas that we're actually developing just from listening in Twitter spaces. So um, like, I'll still be there. Um, we will have a presence there um, just in terms of, you know, uh, the direction that we want to grow. Um, and in terms of Twitter, scalability, um, we have to ask ourselves two questions. So one, um, is there a critical mass in Twitter? Can we grow to a point where we say like, this is as high as we can go with crit, uh, Twitter? Because, you know, like new people coming into Twitter, like isn't, you know, fast enough to sustain like our vision. And if the answer to that, it, if the answer to is Twitter, like the only place where we can get a message out and if the answer is no, that Twitter isn't the only place you can get a message out, and the second answer is is that there's only so many people on Twitter, then there has to be somewhere else, right, that uh, where you can communicate your message to to bring more people into your ecosystem. Luckily, the people on Twitter, the people on Reddit, the people in the Safe Moon Army were the first ones into the token. So, like you know, years from now when we're talking about you know like the early days of BBTF and you know, when BBTF was, um, you know, had this market cap or had this volume and we're having those conversations about the early days of it, it's not going to be because like we grew specifically in Twitter. It's going to be because again, like I said earlier, we were that entry point into DeFi. And if people want to learn about DeFi or figure out like where can they get in or what's the easiest way to get in, it's not going to be on the Twitter space. It's going to be in their homes. It's going to be you know, in their coffee shops, like while they're browsing on the internet contextually when they're searching, what is a Bitcoin, you know? So those are the places where we're gonna find those new people to bring them into the ecosystem. And that's what's important to me. And that's where um, I believe as a CEO of this company, people want my attention to be. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with you, you 100%. Know. Holly, oh. you gonna say something? Well, so I was just gonna say, so one thing that, Am I, can you guys hear me? Yeah, kind of, your, really. your connection's not awesome. Oh, perfect. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> so basically what I'm, all I was gonna say is, um, I've come to realize that the people in the Twitter spaces are the same group of people that you talk to every day, especially right now, not a whole lot's going on, right? So my opinion, if you want to get more of a reach out you know, past ecosystem, you've got to tweet out using different words, uh, reach a different community because of algorithms. Correct. 100%. Um, and yeah. then if you look at Mirror Protocol, Mirror Protocol is it built to do that inherently, you know? Um, it's inherently built to reach out to the XRP community, to the BTC community, to the BNB mm -hmm. community. Like each token inherently does mm -hmm. that with the goal of bringing them back into, you know, mirror staking. So that is the function of it, like by design, like 100%. Yeah. You and know, then, go ahead. I'm uh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, and like, this is a, uh, something that people just don't think about. Um, like 
the marketing messaging for like the mirror, like we're not going to go out and just be like, oh, you're an XRP fan, um, buy XRP on the Binance chain or buy something that can get you XRP, right? That's that's not, you know, what the marketing message is. It's like you, you're rallying other communities. You're going to go say, go show the Binance community how strong the XRP community is. Do it with MPXRP, right? Mm -hmm. And like that's like that's the goal is and then you know you can show them the value it's all about how you message the adoption of your product you know like the product inherently has value because it diversifies you like and we can educate people on a diversification of it but you know there are some xrp maxis that just don't you know want anything that doesn't have to do with xrp but they will buy a mirror protocol xrp because it gets them more xrp on the binance smart chain uh, the Binance Smart Chain is super liquid, uh, but additionally, they can still show support for their community on another um, blockchain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, and going back to your marketing message too, I mean, we've run into that a little bit too. We have, you know, when we're just talking about specifically Twitter, we have like almost 900 followers, but when it comes to our YouTube page, we have almost 7,000 followers. So at some point you're right that that caps out and it's I'm sure it's different for whatever business token whatever we're talking about uh, YouTube channel whatever it is um, everybody hits that that cap at some point and and um, you can just look at our numbers to see that the majority of the support um, that we hear from is not necessarily from Twitter like that mm -hmm. the numbers don't jive it's 7,000 and it's 800 or 900 mm -hmm. uh, but we still you know have those relationships with people on Twitter and have met some great people on Twitter so um, no I, I think that's I think that's uh, very very smart on your guys's end to see what else is out there and how else you can engage uh, new holders and things like that so mm -hmm. let's take a quick break and see if we can't get Holly back on here Okay. Yeah. All right. Before we move on, because she's she's frozen, frozen. <laughs> All right. All right, Don. So now that we have Holly back. All right, we're back. Yeah. Um, and I think the connection is better than it was before. Uh, to kind of wrap up the interview part of this, I wanted to ask you too. You know, the way that you guys had started um, with the old development or developer team and the way you're moving forward what what is that kind of looking like in, in your recruitment and things like that yeah that and so that's perfect so one thing that we specifically identified and this kind of morphs into the conversation about you know leaving twitter is is our previous history with recruiting developers to work on projects for us is that you know they're developers and they have reputations on twitter Right. Um, but also another complexity there is that these guys are developing for multiple projects. Um, and we really wanted a team that was just specifically focused on us and in-house. So we moved our recruitment um, away from, you know, relationships um, and into a more professional style recruitment. So uh, we are doing job postings for specific skill sets. Um, the last job posting we did, we netted 206 um, Solidity developer candidates um, who are like phenomenal. There are some phenomenal resumes in there. We just interviewed, you know, someone whose previous job history includes Coinbase and Google. Um, there are, you know, developers that came out of the uh, FTX layoffs, some uh, Gemini layoffs, we have some meta layoffs, some Twitter layoffs. Um, so there's a lot of like front end developers, software engineers, solidity devs, like people with skills in uh, React and Web3.js. So uh, all the skills that we're looking for, we're looking for people who don't necessarily have a personality attached to their skill um, because uh, moving forward, um, the brand Blockbusters Tech is going to lead the conversation on all things that we're doing. And the only way to allow the brand to kind of take the forefront, and even me personally and my Twitter profile and, you know, uh, like what I'm doing, it's going to come from behind the brand. Um, so if we want the entire team identity to be wrapped in the BBTF brand, uh, we have to start working with people who report to us internally. 
um, and aren't necessarily like personalities or building external brands of their own. So on a follow up on that too, then when you use that third party or whatever, and you have a, a task that say, you know, should take a day and they're working on other projects, they may not be able to get to that task for two to three yep. weeks. Is that correct? That is correct. So if they're working internally for you, they can stop what they're doing, working on something that's coming out in say three months and knock that out in a day and there's not as many delays maybe as there has been in the past. That is correct. Okay. So that seems like a pretty smart move on yeah. on your part yeah. to do that. And like we're diversifying their job tasks. So we don't necessarily just get one Solidity develop developer. We get five and they can all five work on different tasks and then review each other's work before sending it up through our internal auditing or reporting it to their lead developer or um, at the end of the day, having lead check off on their work and test their work, so. Yeah, you know, and also that makes sense to me in the aspect of that's now a team and you don't have that third party where maybe one guy doesn't talk to another guy and if they're working on different things, they can already be thinking about how those things are gonna go together down the road. Yeah. So yeah, that seems like a, a very smart move. Yeah. And, you know, this is something that, um, you know, maybe uh, with me saying this or speaking this, you know, there can be someone that says, oh, well, you should have done that from the beginning or, oh, well, you know what I mean? It seems like something that's so simple that you would do it from the beginning. But like if that were true, like development companies wouldn't exist, one. Um, but two, it's something that I personally had to learn um, through my experience in this space. So. Uh, the one thing that is super valuable that I believe has continued to grow me um, as we grow BBTF is my experience. And I think I've had some unique experiences that other projects haven't had the opportunity to have an experience from. Um, and, you know, I can tell people my experience, but only living through it, uh, problem solving through it, working with people like Lee, Troy, um, Nick, um, like our entire team that we're building around us, Christian, Morgan, um, you know, Landon, Gotti, um, only through working with that team are we able to, uh, you know, conceptualize the best path forward, um, have a multitude of ideas from different vantage points, and then create a standardized operation if we ever, you know, approach those situations again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I suppose if everything just went easy every task that you guys did there wouldn't be as much learning either you know that would, those yeah. mistakes that are made uh, whether it's third-party developers that you use or whether it's something that would happen internally um, yeah, I think a lot of times we learn a lot more from our mistakes than we do when it just goes easy so um, from where we're if it, yeah if it was easy everybody would be doing it just Everyone like the token you guys is the easy part to create that token, that's the easy part, but to build and grow that token, that is what is hard. Yeah, that is correct. Hard. That's and, why you see so many tokens. Yeah, mm -hmm. so many. Oh, and so this is really interesting. Um, if I could just like point this out really sure. quickly. Um, when we started our project and, you know, we had the uh, Bitburn acquisition that um, I, <laughs> I, I won't get into it because um, legally I cannot um but when uh, we did that people asked you know why did you do it and I was telling people that we're about to enter into a phase of extreme consolidation not only in DeFi but in centralized finance as well mm -hmm. um and this is following the same path as the dot-com boom right and that extreme consolidation is going to be all these little projects that started up getting gobbled up by big guys you're gonna see the first ones to move, we're gonna make the most amount of money from their acquisitions, and then the uh, acquisition cost is gonna go down because you know, projects are gonna be less valuable um, as it goes down. It's gonna follow the same trajectory as the dot-com boom. Um, so, you know, we see these massive layoffs, Binance, you know, going up to Voyager. Um, you know, obviously there was a limited objection by the SEC, but, you know, that's, you know, them, you know, why are you buying this company? Answer that question verbatim. Uh, kind of thing like why did you want to acquire it for one billion dollars are you laundering money or not like that's what a limited objection is um so but we're seeing the market like kind of consolidate and then what happens at the end of that consolidation cycle those are going to be the players that's left in the game right 
Yeah, and we've been saying that for a long time, right? I mean, we've just said mm-hmm. there's there's going to be less and less options out there because the ones that are actually performing, <clears throat> excuse me, are the ones that are they're going to rise to the top yeah. and and be the big players in all of this. Mm-hmm. Holly, did you have a question to ask? Yeah, so I feel like I already know the answer to this, um, but if you had to do it all over again, would you? Yes. And is there anything that you would do differently? Yes. Okay, go into detail. (laughs) (laughs) Um, um, If I had to do it over again, I would. Um, I... Um, differently, anything I would have done differently is I would have hired a different company to launch our token. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, no, I just, I, like I said, I feel like I knew that, but knowing how hard it is to build a project to, you know, have all these different things come up like the hack and all that. I was just interested to see if like you would do this all again. Um, most CEOs would say absolutely yes, but you have yeah. some that are like, hell no. <laughs> yeah. But you know, they're already committed, so they have to continue. So, you know, just- when you find that thing in your life, that's like literally giving you energy, you find yourself waking up extra early. Like I'm getting up at, you know, 4.30, I usually get up at 4.30, but you know, I'm getting up at 4.30 with more energy. You know, first thing I'm doing is hopping on and then, you know, checking the token analytics, um, you know, of all three of the active tokens right now, Um, you know, checking in and dev chats to see what progress is made, you know, looking in on like our shared design docs to see what updates have been done there. Like this literally gives me energy and like, I love it. I absolutely love it. Like I am going to be doing this for a very long time. Uh, not only am I going to be doing this for a very long time, um, but we're going to thrive. Um, there is one thing that I personally feel confident about, and it's the uh, resiliency that I believe that I have. And um, under the only outcome that I'm willing to accept here is being one of the most successful tokens. And like, I will receive like speaking engagement events and all that. And this isn't me bragging. This is just like, this is how confident I am and what we're building and how different what we're building is and how I can leverage like my past connections to bridge it into the blockchain world. Like I haven't even started going through my Rolodex and calling people yet. Um, that I'm connected to because we're still building off our foundation. So I'm really excited about it. And the team that's helping with this vision is so amazing. Um, you know, like Morgan, you can you know explain instructions once and she goes and gets it done. Christian, same thing. Troy just gets out, grinds, like whatever you need done, he's going to do. Like, um, you know, like our office in Utah, you know, like, you know, it, Troy made that come to reality. Now I would say we have one of the best relationships with SafeMoon um, that like our relationship with SafeMoon is at the best point it's ever been, um, you know, because of our proximity. Um, Mm -hmm. I have been on so many more meetings where people are more interested in the conversation now because like we have a real brick and mortar location. Like we can't go anywhere, right? Um, like there's an address associated with our token. Um, and that's another thing, you know, when someone wants to, you know, um, FUD BBTF, like I don't even want to call it FUD. If any, like people that are criticizing BBTF with, you know, um, their supposed evidence or whatever they have, it's like, and their token that they're promoting, like it's renounced, like no one's doxed on it. There's no address. There's no identity. Like, like I, I, I'm competing with ghost for the most part. Um, but we didn't want to do that. We wanted to give it a real brand, a real identity, because like we strongly believe this is, uh, you know, going to be one of the players at the end of the consolidation cycle. So what would you say to people who say that, you know, getting leasing that office building is a waste of money? Yeah, I would say um, I appreciate your input. 
um, our business structure necessitates that we have that office. And it's empirically denied because our next client that is coming on has already paid for the office building. So. Good. Well, we appreciate yeah, you being that's so. Exciting. Yeah, and I think the holders will take some uh, uh, some confidence in those last few statements that you made too. So mm -hmm. we appreciate you coming on. Is there anything else before we move on to our other segments that you want to talk about? <laughs> or we? Well, I, I feel about... like we've covered a lot, but. No, no. I, I didn't want to leave you and you go, oh, man, I wish we would have talked about this. So, yeah, right. I'll just call you and be like, hey, can we add this in? And, and, um, and, and, <laughs> that's just going to make Greg mad. Oh, no. Um, mad. Maybe. No. <laughs> yeah. So um, not necessarily. I don't want to. Um, um, yeah. Like, I, I think this was a good conversation. And, yeah. you know. I, and I, I just hope I don't come across as like less of like the outgoing, happy person. Like, um, you know, I, I, I'm really excited about this. And like, you know, it's like we're just at a point where this is like the most real it's ever been, you know, like the it's the best time, like, you know, to kind of be in a position that I'm in because like I see what's coming and I'm just like so excited for everybody, you know, but at the same time, I just have to keep my head on straight and just like keep marching forward. So, um, I, yeah, I, I think that's a good place to end it. Um, that's good. Just yeah. keep swimming. Well, yeah. we appreciate it. And, um, now we have to put you through a little bit of torture, but before we do that, <laughs> we're going to let, we're going to let Holly do her, uh, holativity segment. Yes. I am so, it feels like I haven't done this in forever, you guys, because I, I didn't do it last week. Slacker. And then whiskey did it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. I feel so <laughs> like, this is weird. <laughs> but <laughs> so, anyways, I actually am going to highlight King 674. So, I originally met King through the Misfits. Um, and he used to host spaces and he's just very positive in a lot of things that he tweets out. And he's just an overall, like really nice person. Um, he, I think it was, it's yeah, today, actually he had posted, it's not always about money, but absolutely about the friendships first and bonds created. They will last and they, they will last and through the connection, you'll be able to help each other to grow and to make successful stories together. Victory will always come when there's honesty involved. I just, I really appreciated that because, you know, one reason that I am on Twitter, it's not for the projects, right? It, for me, it is about the community and the friendships that are, I, I've built um, just being able to meet a whole lot of people um, on Twitter. Safe Moon will still be, you know, will still be there even if I was not on Twitter. So I'm not real, you know, it's not about the projects for me, it's about people. And, and I feel like with King, he's the same way, um, just, just based off of the things that he tweets out. So if you want positivity and just a kind person, King is the person to follow. And again, his, his uh, handle is King Six. The word six it's spelled out seven four. So I suggest following him. He's real big into misfits as well. Um, just really cool dude. So yeah, King Six, Yay, King. King. <laughs> misfits. King six yeah. seven four. Yeah, it's funny, kind of what you said there too about how you know how you view Twitter and you know I think we got started in Twitter basically to get to our name out but we stay mm -hmm. in Twitter because of the relationships that we've made, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So I, I think that it's pretty cool, especially whenever you can highlight people for being uh, positive in that aspect. So, well, with that being yeah. said, Greg, it's about that time. All right. It's time for Caleb's choice. His choice. His rules. Oh, man. All right, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Love we gotta have dance. we gotta put a <laughs> yeah a collaboration of all Holly's dances together. It'll probably be our highest viewed video of all time. Probably. <laughs> all right. First question of the day: What was your favorite game to play as a kid with your family? Oh, with the family. With the family. Oh. Hmm. We had some epic Monopoly battles. True. Oh yeah. yes. Growing up. So that mm -hmm. that would have to be my answer. 
Monopoly. Yeah. Hmm. What about you guys? Mine's the same. I, 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 yeah. I, I, I agree. Mine is also the same. I am absolutely brutal when it comes to Monopoly. Same. Same. I'm so competitive. It's ridiculous. We're going to have to get everybody around this table and we'll, when we'll throw a live uh, Monopoly yes. edition Gosh. out at everybody. Yeah, I, I was going to go with... Uh, not a board game, but mom and dad, we shut all, all the lights off in the house and play hide and go seek in the dark. Oh, yeah, we did. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, wow. I, I, got, a, I got a funny story about that. Yeah. So it's pitch black in our house, right? <laughs> and I walk into one of these bedrooms one time, and I don't remember how old I was, but whatever. And I just walk in the room, and I just feel this overbearing <laughs> presence. And it's like you want to back out of the room because you don't know what it is. <laughs> And about that time, because your eyes start to get adjusted to the light a little bit, or oh. being so dark. And about that yeah. time, my dad reaches down and grabs me. He was standing on top <laughs> of our dresser, and he was like hovering <laughs> over me, but I couldn't see him. But I, I will never forget that. It was hilarious. He was dude. Yeah, because he's like oh six four. He was a big dude, yeah. and it was a little bit out of his personality to crawl on furniture. So yeah. it was pretty cool. <laughs> What about you? Oh Greg? my gosh. Well, I was going to say, yeah, a board game. Monopoly is one, but probably the one we played the most was the game of life. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Was, 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 oh, I love life. Going to, yeah, oh. going to college or not. Yeah. That was always the big decision. <laughs> right. <laughs> Still is, I guess. Right. Uh, I guess. <laughs> All right. Question two is Who's your celebrity crush? Ooh. Gwen Stefani. We know who Holly's is. Yeah. It's George. I mean, right? I have several, but I have one in particular. Well, who is it? Yeah. George Clooney. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I was going to guess it. Yeah. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> you said Gwen? She used to be. Oh, yeah, when I was younger. I what would say now? she's the one. I don't know. I'm just saying. He's going to keep it. I don't have celebrity <laughs> crushes. He's cleared that one through his wife, so he yeah. won't get in trouble. <laughs> yeah. 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 But when I was in high school, I had Gwen all over the place, so. Huh. Mm. Dawn? So if anyone could tell Mariah Carey to call me, <laughs> that would be amazing. So you're even willing to put up with her diva behavior? So, you know, some say... things you have to sacrifice, you know? <laughs> I was going to say, we've heard her speak about Mariah Carey. Before. Yeah. <laughs> Holly's not a huge fan. No. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's yours? Um. Uh, Wait, didn't you say Gwyneth Paltrow? No. 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 Gwen Stefani. Oh, Stefani. Who said that? Oh, right, that's right. you. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I had to pick. I guess. Yeah. It's your question. You don't have an answer. I'll say Zoe De Dejanel. Oh. oh. Yeah, a new girl. New girl. Yeah. She falls. She just randomly falls. Yeah. Who, is it, Zoe? Is her, is her name Zoe? Zoe Deschanel? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like Zoe. I don't I like her yeah. sister humor. I'm I not sure too. I have one. You, you have don't? to say something, Josh. Yeah. I'm randomly trying to think of Well, one. but as a kid, who was your <coughs> Wow. I don't know. Well, You're trying to get in trouble. No, because I <laughs> let him be. the deal you with know him. In all honesty, I don't put those. Kathy people, Ireland? Well, as a kid, I did like <laughs> Okay, there you go. So yeah, I, knew. It is. I knew you knew. Yeah. yeah, but I just don't really look up to those people, so I don't really pay attention to them that much. But Kathy Ireland, I'll go there. All right, That's, there we go. That just shows how well, old I am. <laughs> that was. <laughs> All right. All right, final question. Have you ever fallen down the stairs? Hell yes. <laughs> Can you explain what yeah. happened? Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. I've, I've fallen down the stairs. Slip, you know, where you got the steep and the carpets on it. Yeah. And you slip, and it, there's just claw marks all the way down. <laughs> all the way down the sheetrock. I have so. giant feet, and wow. some basement stairs are not very yeah. wide. And I have caught my foot, because every time you hit it, it's like part of my foot overhangs anyways. Yeah. And if it hits, you've had the wrong kind of shoes on, it's just... And then it says, and it was pretty ugly, I'm pretty sure. But nobody witnessed it. It was just me. It just lay there for a second like, yeah, okay, I'm still alive. Good. Still alive. Yeah. Have yeah. uh, you? Oh, yeah. Oh. What? The, 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 worst oh, yeah. Day, <laughs> the worst time was when I had uh, I ruptured my Achilles tendon, so my, my foot was in a cast. 
I yeah. went outside and it just rained and I was on crutches and I went down like 15 stairs on my butt. <laughs> oh. And that sucked. Ooh. Yeah, I bet. But, but yeah, my butt was okay because it was still casted up. So. <laughs> wow. Cast coming down the stairs. Crutches went flying. <laughs> oh. Don, what about you? Ever fallen downstairs? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Was there alcohol involved? <laughs> uh, no, so not this time. Yeah. Not this time. I, I try to stay away from stairs um, when I'm on the falls. So, um, yeah, when I was a kid, I remember, um, not when I was a kid, when I was in high school, and it, I was like, uh, had a crush on this girl, and I was like walking her to class, and I, I I missed the first step somehow, and I just like I'm sliding past, past <laughs> classmates and stuff, just going like tumbling down the stairs. I get to the bottom, I'm hurting. I stand oh, yeah. up. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, she... that had to pretend girl, like ball. it didn't hurt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. Blood's or, running down your leg. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know what that is. Yeah, that was. I I will definitely not forget that. I didn't break anything. That's good. Um, so yeah you get clumsy around a girl at that age don't you yeah <laughs> <laughs> even at our age the right girl will make you clumsy I guess. <laughs> holly what about you oh yes um so the time i remember the very most is so i used to work at a vitamin facility and <clears throat> we made soft gels i don't know if you guys know what those are right yeah. soft gel yeah. capsules yep mm -hmm. Um, and so it was actually downstairs in a basement and I worked in quality. So I would, you know, walk the floors regularly. Um, and as you guys know, I love hills. Hmm. And so, you know, they, they made the exception for me that I can still wear my heels just as long as I'm careful, blah, blah, blah. And so <laughs> I was going downstairs in my high heels and I had slipped because the, the like soft gelatin it actually uh it goes airborne so it kind of everything is very slick and slippery wherever you know we're making soft gels and so i was going downstairs and i slipped and i went down oh gosh it was probably 12 steps but i went i tried oh, to hold myself <laughs> with the railing and so i went down on my side and i had bruises from like the top here all the way down my leg Dang. for the longest time <laughs> and i didn't tell anybody because i like when i got up i was really dizzy and i was like oh shit!" so i had to sit back down and i sat in that stairwell for a while because I was like, I can't tell anybody because they're going to ban me from wearing, <laughs> from wearing heels. heels. <laughs> I'm going to take this concussion I, so I keep wearing, wearing heels. Yeah. So nobody knew that I had fallen down the stairs because of, it was because of my high heels too, because they're a little slicker than normal shoes, yeah. right? Yeah. So, I'll, I'll oh yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> man. That's mm -hmm. a rough one there. Yeah. Holly, what's your yeah. question? Hey guys, yeah. Really, I'm sorry. I have five more minutes. Okay, we'll wrap oh, this crap. up real quick. We'll do this then. We're, yeah. Okay, so mine is pretty simple. How many times do you look at yourself in your underwear per day? <laughs> per day? <laughs> Zero. Oh, Zero. I don't look at myself. Oh, yeah. yeah, right. I mean, <laughs> I never look at myself I, in my underwear. I shower twice a day, and that's so what I was gonna say. I twice a day like, when I shower. I don't yeah, I feel yeah, like I. I really that's when I. <laughs> yeah, you. I don't. My mirror is just right there as I'm getting dressed, or uh, yeah. you know, do my makeup thing. So yeah, I feel like it's twice a day. Okay. Hmm. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. Let's do this. Don't have five minutes. Yeah, we have to test. get to this disgusting shit. Um. Introduce this for us, Holly, since you picked it out. I did not pick <laughs> it out. However, Don did ask me, which intrigued me to open the package. And we see that we have shredded dried squid. Yeah, delicious. You guys, like cheese, I don't eat like... this stuff. Yeah, you do today. I'm like, it, it looks like shredded chicken. That's way too much. It, it smells, smells good. Smells it smells like bad. jerky. It smells good. It's oh, like Lord. It it actually smells good. What? Oh, it smells yeah. like fish. Yeah. It's, well, it's squid. Like <laughs> oh, oh, no. Did you smell it? Yeah. Woo. All okay, right. so, oh, that's too much. I, <laughs> Oh, uh, that's not too much. Here's here we go. Right here. Oh no. Oh wait, we're we're doing this right now. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're speeding oh, over we, you, man. We don't want you oh, to. Oh, you said it smells like fish. It's oh bad. Yeah. no, we, you can't miss this. It smells real bad. Oh, I'm so gross. <laughs> oh. 
It's got to be better than those beans. Like, right, how much do I have to do? Can I do like one? I'm just yeah, doing a, like a little. Get your mouth full. No, no, get your mouth full. <laughs> get your mouth full. All right. No. Cheers. Good luck. Right. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> I got a big hole. Ah! Okay. 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 Uh. 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 That is. That that is gross. It's like when you start chewing into it. Yeah. Mm. It's really chewy. It's really chewy. <laughs> it's like oh what I would God. imagine cat food tastes like. Oh, yeah. and it's kind of spicy. <laughs> it smells like oh. cat food. Yeah. Woo. Oh, my breath smells like fish. <laughs> uh, oh, gosh. I don't know how you guys eat this crap. Well, we have eaten way worse. I'll, I'll just say <laughs> that. But, um. Not as bad as the jelly beans. No, not as bad as the jelly no. beans. The not as bad as sour weird. pickle balls. If you try to try sour not pickle balls, as everything frogs, else is pretty like freaking close. I want to go back in for a second. Oh man, uh -uh. it's all right. I think it's good. It tastes like turkey. Of course you do. You Don, Don went back for more. Oh. Who? Don? Yeah. yeah. It's like oh, a. That's that's nasty. I don't think it has the cool. consistency of beef jerky. Yeah, does, you know. Yeah. I spit mine now. I'm willing to ship it to you guys. I cannot. Mm, My breath like smells like fish. Your mm -hmm. breath is gonna smell kind of like fish. Tastes like what I. Oh yeah, you're immediately gonna go have to use mouthwash after this. Yeah, yeah I feel like I definitely need to. It's almost like tuna, that is disgusting. but in almost, jerky yeah. form. Yeah. All right, yeah. well, Don, to respect your time, uh, we appreciate you. Thanks for coming on. Um, mm -hmm. I think that that probably answered a lot of questions for people that maybe that they had had. And uh, we look forward to communicating with you in the future. Hey, yes. thank you guys for having me. This is great. And I'm a huge supporter. Um, I show everyone your stuff. And Holly, <laughs> just keep being you. You're amazing. Thanks, Don. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> Have a great weekend, and God bless. Yeah. Be kind. Yeah.